Hi, can you hear me? Okay, so good evening all of you. Am I audible to you? Good evening, am I audible to you? Thank you, Jocelyn. Others, am I audible to you? Shall we start? Okay, thank you, Jyotishma. So let's begin. We have at hands clinical concepts of microbiology. We have clinical concepts of microbiology to begin with to tell you how clinically we are related and how you can read microbiology in such a way infections can be understood better. Some reasoning, some kind of logic will be told to you which can be helpful for your preparations. This is Dr. Minakshi Sundaram here, neat PG educator and I'm an MBBS MD and gold medalist in both MBBS and MBBS MD exams and I'm a high octane educator for biochemistry and microbiology for the past 11 years and I have placed my students in the top institutions like Ames, JIPMA, PJ Chandigarh consistently every single year. I'm a prolific quiz master, international and national quizzes. So now in this particular session, we'll have a short class plus quiz. This quiz will be menti.com based quiz and this particular class is general concepts that you will be knowing. General concepts that you should be knowing to understand microbiology. Otherwise, microbiology might generally look like a subject that you have to learn by rote. But if you try to understand these concepts, you will be able to use this information in every single clinical picture that you can come across. I repeat once again, microbiology is not a single subject. It penetrates deep into any kind of clinical subject where there are infections. If you go into any hospitals, 60 to 70 percent of admitted cases and 70 percent of the cases who are coming to the OPD will be definitely infectious cases. So on that basis, every single unit like medicine, surgery, OG, pediatrics, ophthalmology, ENT, everything will have microbiology in it. And if you want to understand how the way it behaves, you have to understand the basic concepts of the clinical understanding of the class. So before we go any further, let me have a few notifications for you. There is an academy launching a two month UA light subscription. Here you can use the code DRASM or DRASM live, which can fetch you 10% discount and additional 10% discount than the already existing one. And you'll be able to have access to my live classes. These are the features of plus subscription. And these are the features of iconic subscription. And these are the special class features, interactive light classes, polls for the learners, raise a hand issue. There is, you can actually talk to the direct, talk to the faculty directly and you can never miss a class because there will be recording sessions, lecture notes are available anytime and anywhere you can watch it. This is the NEET PG free test calendar. The next test is supposed to be on March 26th, 4 p.m. and March 27th, 9 a.m. Image based series and All India mock test. All India mock test is coming up on March 27 for everyone. Please use code DRASM to enroll now. And there is a launching previous year question bank session. And there is something like launching MBBS professional course first one. These are the top offers of FMG to the December 2021. And there are two batches coming up, NEET 2022, and all these faculty are teaching you. And here you have FMG 2022, where I'll be teaching you an FMG high yield MCQ marathon. These are the highly updated effective question bank series and FMG 2022 high yield revision and MCQ batch. This is the neat PG subscription prices. So in the previous session that we were discussing, we used to have certain things learned. What are the things I told you? Yes. Thank you, Samrudhi, Reshma, Banu and Prahadi Shemke. So in the previous class, I taught you about cram staining and we spoke about appendages of a bacteria. Can you recollect what are the appendages of a bacteria? 
I told you anything present inside the cell, I may call them as organelles. But the irony is that in case of a prokaryote, if it's a bacteria, there is absence of what? Prokaryon. Carrion means what I told you people. Carrion means what? Excellent. Carrion means nucleus. Prokaryon means those organisms who evolved before the evolution of a nucleus. So these organisms will have no nucleus because of the absence of nucleus, no nucleus bound endoplasmic reticulum that is ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, mitochondria, all these organelles are absent in case of prokaryote. Now remember prokaryotes will be still requiring, yes, prokaryotes still require energy. So what is the site of energy synthesis people? Who is the energy? Who is the powerhouse of the cell? Who is the powerhouse of the cell from the simple concepts? Jocelyn, ribosomes are sites for protein synthesis. Remember, your prokaryotic bacteria will not have any of these any of these organelles except ribosomes. Ribosomes are present in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. They are meant for protein synthesis. You tell me who is called as a power of the cell? Excellent Samriddhi Kumar. There is mitochondria. But mitochondria is an organelle which is absent. So what will you have? Mitochondria is an organelle. It is absent in case of prokaryote. So what do you think will happen? Because mitochondria is not present in a bacteria, you think the bacteria can't synthesize ATP? Is it correct? Is this understanding correct? See, I told you prokaryotes have no organelles. It means no mitochondria. Except ribosomes, no other organelles are present. So because mitochondria is not present, there is no synthesis of ATP. Is it correct? Jeffin says anaerobic glycolysis. They are saying MC. Okay. See, there is nothing called as anaerobic glycolysis. Even bacteria can have aerobic glycolysis. Bacteria, there are organisms who are aerobes. So they can have aerobic glycolysis. The only difference is that in the absence of in the absence of, watch very carefully, these are the difficult questions we have to answer. In the absence of a mitochondria, still a bacteria will be able to have electron transport chain happening. Electron transport chain definitely happens in a bacteria which is called as aerobic respiration, also referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. Aerobic respiration also referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. How does this happen? When the cell membrane or the cell wall of the bacteria invaginates, on the invaginated membrane, all the cytochrome proteins will come and hit. So, the electrons will get transported across here to here. Electron transport chain can happen. ATP synthesis will happen. And this membrane invagination will slowly disappear when enough amount of ATP has been generated. And because this invagination is a makeshift arrangement, I repeat, this invagination is a makeshift temporary arrangement. It's a very temporary arrangement. Because of that, you will understand one thing. They are present only in the middle period. So you call them as mesosomes. Remember, this is a golden information. USMLE questions are very common in this area. What are mesosomes? Meso means body. I mean, meso means middle and somes means body. Those bodies were found intermediately when there is a necessity and they disappear after their work is over. They are called as mesosomes. It can be applicable for any kind of structure also, but generally mesosomes are the equivalents of mitochondria in a bacteria. Did you understand this? Is that clear? Can I go forward? Also, in the previous class, I spoke about a flagella. Flagella are important for motility. Remember, this flagella is made up of proteins called as flagellin. Flagellin is supposed to be a protein, right? So, if it is a protein, are they strongly antigenic or weakly antigenic? Are they strong or weak antigens?
flagella are strongly antigenic or weakly antigenic excel in genzyme it is strongly antigenic because they are proteins and if they are strongly antigenic they can elicit antibody response so when you want to go for a diagnosis in diagnosis you will say titer values what is titer values the concentration of a particular antibody can be denoted as titer value let us discuss about the meaning of the word titer later but for the time being antibody concentrations are referred to as titer values so when there is a flagella present in an organism if the organism is a motile organism then it can easily introduce any kind of antigen please remember in case of gram negative enteric bacilli you have a special name for the flagella and that special name is called as H antigen. If I try to draw an organism like this, you will be drawing the organism like this as a flagella. So I take a cross section. When I look at the cross section, this is how the organism can look. Now if I ask you what letter can you see here, this is the H antigen that you can see here which is the flagella and this is the O letter which is the O antigen referred to as somatic antigen and if at all I have a very thick structure which can protect the organism from outside it is called as the K antigen look at how I am drawing it this is the K antigen it is almost complete and almost complete so K antigen speaks about the capsule O antigen speaks about the outer membrane outer membrane of the gram negative organism is made up of lipopolysaccharide h antigen is the flagella made up of flagellin so i repeat once again this denotions are important in gram negative enteric bacilli only this logic will be asked to you in the upcoming quiz immediately after this class is over we'll be having a quiz contest right let's see how many of you can get the right answer so watch this gram negative organisms they have to be enteric bacilli h antigen means flagella o antigen means semantic antigen k antigen means capsular antigen so shall we discuss about the concept of capsules If you are ready, shall we discuss about the concept of capsules? Yes, look at this part. Capsules. How do you understand them? They are tough layers, molded layers, which are complete. They surround the organism. They surround the organism and they exclude the stain. They exclude the stain imagine you have a very slippery very slippery smooth titanium coated ball on that if i try to throw water droplets do you think the water droplets will sit on it are you understanding my question if i have a titanium sphere floating here and i pour drops of water do you think the drops of water will stick here A smooth titanium sphere is floating, water will not be able to stick here. So the water is repelled from the titanium. Imagine instead of titanium, if at all I have a cotton ball, a cotton sphere, if I throw water, do you think the water will be lost or the water will be absorbed inside? If it is a cotton ball, if it's a cotton ball, if I throw the same water from the top, will it go inside? Yes, it is absorbed. So, the capsule is similar to a titanium layer that is present on the surface of a ball. The whole ball is not titanium. Just remember, the outer layer can look like a titanium, which can prevent the stain from entering inside. So, when I throw any stain on a bacteria, the bacteria will be having the capsule that excludes the stain. Excluding stain means what? The stain is not able to enter into the bacteria. Is that clear? So now let me show you what is the difference between a capsule, a slimy layer and a biofilm. These are the ones which will make a huge difference in case of understanding hospital acquired infections. See, capsule is a proper complete layer always present in the organism and it surrounds the organism completely. While slimy layer is just a mucoid material haphazardly patchworkly present around the organism because it is incomplete the dye can enter inside the slimy layer. Did you understand this?
a capsule was a slimy layer both of them can be present around the organism but a capsule is a complete covering it can prevent the entry of stain where a slimy layer is an incomplete layer it can allow the entry of any kind of stain inside but what is biofilm now if at all i have this bacteria this bacteria this bacteria all these organisms covering the slimy layer will come together and coalesce to form a bigger layer and this will be called as the biofilm did you understand this part Biofilm means these kind of slimy layers will come together and surround the organism like this. Okay. So now what are the most important capturing features? Now you are going to use this information for applying into a disease process. Now please watch this. We will try to convert morphological data facts into logical clinical picture. So for that reason please be with me. Here capsule as I told you is a very tough layer. It is a molded layer. It surrounds the organism and excludes the stain. It means it can prevent the entry of not only the stain but also prevent entry of antibody from binding to the core of the organism. Also it prevents the entry of an antibiotic. It prevents the entry of an antibiotic deep into the organism. So there is a chance it can be staying outside. I am not saying antibiotics will be completely repelled but definitely there will be a barrier for the antibiotics from going inside. And the most important aspect of a capsule is it prevents phagocytosis by macrophages and neutrophils. It prevents phagocytosis. Let me use a different color. It prevents phagocytosis by macrophages and neutrophils. And neutrophils. As you are listening to whatever I am saying, I will try to convert the concepts into MCQs and I want to see how many of you can understand the clinical concepts of how you have learned right now. If you haven't understood, we will repeat this once again. Don't worry about it. We will go for the quiz immediately in next 10 minutes. Now look at this biofilm part. A biofilm will be helpful for adhering the organism to any surface where the organism is present. For example, if a patient is suffering from UTI or the patient had some kind of surgery, because of which if a patient is having a urinary catheter placed through the urethra, if a patient is having this, if this is the urethra and a catheter is running through the urethra, the patient will not have to urinate, the urine will collect in the urine bag. But those microbes who are actually living on the inside layer, when they start growing into the inner layer of the urethral tube, if this is the catheter, these bacteria will start accumulating here. Around the bacteria, some slimy mole layer will be present. They become a biofilm. That makes the organism adhere strongly to the surface because of which clearance of the organism is lesser. Clearance of organism becomes lesser and lesser. If an organism is present in an area for a longer amount of time, it is called as persistent infection. The complications can start increasing. At the same time, Biofilm is also involved in antibiotic resistance. Biofilm is also seen in antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance. Please make a note. Biofilm can help in antibiotic resistance. It can help in adherence of an organism strongly. It decreases the clearance of an organism. Is that clear? Now let me give you some facts which are very essential for answering questions. Which organisms have been recently found to have biofilms being formed around them? You will be having Klebsiella, E. coli in many situations, Pseudomonas, sometimes some people say all Staphylococcus but definitely Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus saprophyticus, some authors say Acinetobacter, Acinetobacter. Please make a note of this. There is one more organism called as Staphylococcus lug. Dunensis. Staphylococcus lugdunensis. Have a look at all these organisms. Soon we will be able to have to answer questions. Biofilms can be found in E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Staphylococcus lugdunensis and Acinetobacter because of which these organisms can easily become multi-drug resistant. They can adhere strongly to the area. Now let me show you a picture. This is taken from Wikipedia. This is 
Creative Commons. The owner of this picture is Carla Hayden. Now look at this. Capsid or capsule. Look how the capsule has surrounded the organism. Imagine this gray cylinder is the organism and this is the core of the organism nucleic acid. This is the capsule. Look at a slimy layer. It is not having a proper structure. Sometimes there may be breaks inside the slimy layer. Look at the biofilm. Such slimy layer around each organism has coalesced to become a bigger layer. This is biofilm. Did you understand this part people? Okay, so when I look at it under the scanning microscope, if you look at the microscope here, look at this. This is the capsular layer, the organism is the center. Between the organism and the capsule, there is no stain. So all these things are looking like a dark background where the organism is not stained, so that the surrounding background is being stained. That is why you require dark field or negative staining in case of microscopy negative staining in case of microscopy look at this part if at all i draw a diagram here around the white background i'm using a colored lining here in the background that is darker i'm having white colored organisms and why are these organisms looking white the organism is at the center which is black while the capsule is surrounding the organism so the capsule is not able to accept the stain so stain is staying outside so the organisms are looking like white colored eyes in the black colored background is that clear but slimy layer can easily accept the stain stain can enter into the slimy layer okay stain can enter into the slimy layer Okay, now let me give you a list of organisms who are capsulated. Capsulated organisms. Number one is pneumococcus, also referred to as streptococcus pneumoniae. Then we have meningococcus, which is Neisseria meningitidis. Third one is Staphylococcus aureus which has a micro capsule. Then you focus on Streptococcus pyogenes where only fresh strains have capsule. As the strains become older, the capsules are destroyed by themselves. Auto destruction of capsules. Fifth one is Streptococcus a galaxiae. Just try to hear all these words. It is not mandatory you have to remember all these names today itself. Just take your time, process it. Whenever you hear it in your class again, you will feel like you know this. That is why you are learning this. So, pneumococcus, meningococcus, staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus agalaxiae. Then, some rare strains of E. coli. We have pseudomonas. Then, we have salmonella. Then, we have pasturella. We have Capnocytophaga, some strains of Yersinia, then we have Bacillus anthracis. I have told you already, Bacillus anthracis is the only capsule which is not made up of polysaccharide, it is made up of a polypeptide. And what polypeptide is it? It is made up of polymer of D glutamic acid. Polymer of D glutamic acid. Bacillus anthracis. I've given you at least 12 different organisms. In fungi, you can have cryptococcus, which is capsulated. So they all are made up of only polysaccharides. In case of uh, hemophilus, in case of hemophilus, we can have fraction of a protein, but a capsule polysaccharide is also present. So, I repeat once again, pneumococcus, meningococcus, staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus agalaxiae. 
E. coli, Pseudomonas, Salmonella, Pasteurella, Capnocytophaga, Yersinia, and Haemophilus, Bacillus, Anthracis, Cryptococcus. Now, these are the things I would want you to know as the names. Now, let me give you some concepts before we go for the quiz. We are going to start the quiz immediately. Just be with me. Concepts in case of capsules. Capsules will have two chemistry properties. Two chemistry properties. What is property number one? They act as zwitter ions. Zwitter ions. Number two, they have detergenic action. They have detergenic action. Tell me, when a particular protein or a capsule or any structure is in a zwitter ionic state, what do you expect from them? Zwitterion means you will be having, if this is the compound, and if I say the compound is in zwitterionic state, you have plus and minus charges being equal in number because of which net charge is what? Net charges. If the capsule exhibits zwitterionic property, what is the net charge? Excellent. Electric charges are cancelled. So the net charge is zero. So what are the two things? It is having no charge on its surface. Effectively zero charge. Effectively zero charge. At the same time, it is not going to be moving in an electrophoretic field. That doesn't matter right now. Because of effectively neutral charge, imagine what exactly happens here. I have taught you in first year MBBS many times. I have told you this in first year MBBS that when I look at a biological membrane, which is actually a phospholipid bilayer, you will have certain rules how the bilayers will behave. You remember that these kind of spheres are called as phosphates and the layers that are stain lines or wavy lines are fatty acids. Technically, they are triglyceride molecules with phosphates. Now, when I bring any compound with a charge, be it X minus or a Y plus, they get repelled by the membrane. So, ionic substances cannot pass through. I repeat, ionic substances cannot pass through biological membranes, cannot diffuse across biological membranes. So, if this is inside the cell and this is outside the cell, if any molecule is inside the cell, it won't be able to exit the cell easily. If any molecule is outside the cell, it won't be able to enter the cell easily. So, X minus charge or Y plus charge will always be difficult. But if at all the bacteria, which is X, if it has a minus charge or a plus charge, when a capsule is covering this particular charge and the capsule has vitrionic property, when the net charge is zero, they will be able to cross biological membranes easily. Cross biological membranes easily. Did you understand this? Did you understand the logic here? Yes, Jisuka Cherry, if you start your preparation right now, you can crack the neat PG. Let me tell you a small thing. From today, this is 25th of March, you will be having your exam in 21st of May. So you have approximately 50 days. In 50 days, every single day, you solve 200 MCQs. So 250 approximately, you can have 10,000 MCQs solved. If you can solve 10,000 MCQs and revise them before you go for the exam, you are in for a very good chance for your seat. Okay, all the best. So now look at this. Others, can you understand this part? Yes. So when a capsule is covering the organism, the charges present on the organism has actually been nullified and covered. So the outer charge is not actually present. The net charge is zero. It can cross the biological membrane. One of the important biological, that is a sacred biological membrane is in your CNS. What is the membrane you have? In your CNS, what is the membrane you have which is concerned for many kind of drug entry in your CNS, that is central nervous system, which membrane is so unique, which is concerned about the drug entry into the CNS? In your central nervous system, yes, meninges, but more before that, what do you say? What is the barrier you have? In CNS, what is the barrier you have, which are concerned about the entry and exit of a drug 
Excellent Sri Devi. The answer is blood brain barrier. Very good Jwala. Very good Jesslyn Akshay Nivasani. So you're concerned about blood brain barrier. When a bacteria has a capsule, and even though the organism's outer layer may have minus or plus charges, the capsule will nullify the charges. Because the net charge is zero, it can cross the blood brain barrier. Blood brain barrier is a very sacred layer covering the CNS. Once it has been breached, it is infection of the CNS. So meningitis can happen. So when a bacteria is having a capsule, because of the presence of the capsule bacteria's chemical property called as vitreon, it can help the organism cross biological membrane easily, so it can cause meningitis. I am not saying all capsule bacteria can cause meningitis. I am also not saying all meningitis are caused only by capsulated bacteria. I repeat the statements, listen very carefully. All capsulated bacteria do not cause meningitis. I am not saying they should cause meningitis. I am also not saying all meningitis can be caused only by capsulated bacteria. These two statements are not what I am saying. I am saying if a bacteria has a capsule, the chances of meningitis is higher. Did you understand this? If the bacteria has a capsule, the chances of having meningitis is higher. Did you understand this? Yes, Jessica, sorry. Why do you want to know? Now, there is a next property called as detergenic action. Detergenic action means what? Imagine when I use a detergent powder on the clothes. If I throw water and I throw detergent, and if at all I want to remove the stain, what do I do? I keep on stroking the local area. When I keep stroking the local area, I'll be able to produce bubbles, right? Foamy bubbles. This is a method or an explanation for missile formation. Missile formation is a method by which you are introducing amphipathy. Amphipathy means what? The presence of hydrophilic and hydrophobic layers. Hydrophilic and hydrophobic layers can be seen. So, if at all a bacteria has a capsule, with the help of the capsule, the bacteria in the local area can produce a lot of small bubbles. It keeps on producing a lot of small bubbles. Then the bacteria with the capsule enters into the bubble and starts residing inside these bubbles. Such bubbles on accumulation with infection and pus is referred to as abscess formation. It is referred to as abscess formation. Is that clear? Hydrophilic, hydrophobic property, they can help with the formation of bubbles. With the help of bubbles, the organism can enter inside the bubbles and stay inside the bubbles. The conglomeration of all bubbles put together is called as abscess. So when a bacteria is capsulated, with the help of its detergenic action, it can produce abscess. So these are the clinical pictures. When you have a brain abscess, clinical pictures you will be having to understand. So shall we start the quiz right now? Yes, Jessica Cherry, you have an academic courses. You can follow me in telegram and you will be able to see all the links I have posted on an academy you can search for Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Mayes you will be able to come to my profile in that you can see all the plus and the special classes ok so shall we start the quiz contest right now I am looking for the code for you. So let's go for the quiz. The code is 31 those those people who have joined the class just now so we are starting the quiz contest on some concepts which can be helpful for a clinical patient 
we have discussed about flagella capsule and certain structures like stains now for that please come to menti.com come to the website called as menti.com and in that website you will be having a small box where you have to just fill in the code the code is the code is use code 3139799 i repeat come to menti.com and use the code 3139799 to fill in the area once you do it you will be able to play the quiz directly so shall we start are you all ready Shall we start? Can you please give me a thumbs up if we can start? Yes. Okay, so we have approximately 100 people are playing it right now. So, very good people. So, for those people who are joining the quiz just now, Please use Menti website. Use code three six sorry three one three nine seven double nine three one three nine seven double nine. Okay, let's go for the first question. on your screen right now answer fast to get more points the tough complete covering around an active bacteria that protects the organism from phagocytosis is which one slimy mold film layer cell membrane spore wall capsule what is a tough complete covering around an active organism or bacteria that protects the organism from phagocytosis the tough layer is it slimy mold film is it cell membrane is it spore wall is it capsule which one is the answer Jesus and Mother Mary, I will be telling you the explanation. Just now the class got over. We are coming back to this. We'll be teaching you this right now. So this is completely based on what we have learned right now. So the time is about to be finished. Yes, the time is up. Let's see how many of you got the right answer. Excellent. So almost 70 people have got it right. Remember, slimy mold film layer. The I'll tell you why the other options are not the right options. Slimy mold film layer is not a complete covering. it may be moderately tough but not very tough cell membrane is not a very tough membrane it's a semi permeable membrane at the same time when you go for spore wall spore wall is a very tough covering but not around an active bacteria spore wall is actually the covering around the spore what is spore the dormant structure created by the bacteria for itself so that it can avoid unfavorable circumstances i repeat the bacteria wants to avoid unfavorable circumstances so the bacteria converts into a vegetative form and becomes a dormant structure called as spore that spore will have a covering called as spore wall but here the spore wall may be right for the concept of toughness but not right for the concept of activeness so capsule is the right answer very well played people let's look at the next let's look at the leaderboard at the end of the first question who has given the fastest answer so xy jeffin santosh sarvajit sri shreya shanmita hari kaulini varsha sudhir are on the top 10 layers now let's go for the second question right away question 2 of 8 answer fast to get more points the bacteria whose capsule is different from others is which one A. Klebsiella pneumoniae. B. Neisseria meningitis. C. Bacillus anthracis. D. Streptococcus pneumoniae. Which one is the answer? Which bacteria's capsule is the different one? Yes. Which bacteria's capsule? is the different one
Okay, the time is up. So many people have given the right answer as bacillus anthracis. See, remember, some people have chosen Klebsiella pneumoniae. I do not know exactly why you chose Klebsiella pneumoniae, but the logic is very simple. Klebsiella pneumoniae is just like any other bacteria whose capsule is made up of just polysaccharide. Neisseria meningococcus is meningococcus that is Neisseria meningitis is meningococcus that is also having a proper capsule and that is also a polysaccharide capsule. Streptococcus pneumonia is a classical bacteria who has a classical capsule that is also polysaccharide. But Bacillus anthracis is the only bacteria who has a polypeptide capsule. Can anybody tell me what is a polypeptide capsule? No, Shubham Mishra, it is not uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae. The answer is Bacillus anthracis. Tell me, what is the difference in Bacillus anthracis capsule, people? I told you just 20 minutes back. What is the component of Bacillus anthracis? Excellent. It is made up of poly-D-glutamic acid. It is made up of poly-D-glutamic acid, which is a polypeptide. Very good, Jocelyn Benita. So remember this. It is the only difference. This is a very unique kind of bacteria. Okay. Now, let's look at the leaderboard at the end of this question. Yes, Shreya is on top, Shanmita, Suga, Rashmi, Jwala, Abhirami, Kripa, May, Justin Benita, Rabia. So these are the top 10 people. In the next question, again the top 10 position may change. So come on, fight for it people. It's a very tough contest. It is neck to neck contest because the class just got over on which we are doing the quiz. Question 3 of 8. Answer fast to get more points. Presence of a H antigen indicates what? If an organism has a H antigen, what does it indicate? The organism is a gram-positive bacillus. The organism can bind strongly to the host surface. The organism can be motile. The microbe is multi-drug resistant. Out of the four, the presence of H antigen indicates what? See, all of you are learning this as a simple information as early as possible before you are entering into MBBS second year. So it means this will actually help you look at the whole syllabus in a better way. So remember, these all are clinically important. When you look at a H antigen, are you able to say whether the organism is gram positive or gram negative? Can you say it is binding to the host surface better? Can you say the organism can be motile? Whether microbe is antibiotic resistant? All these things can come into picture. What is your answer? Yes, three more seconds present. Let's see how many of you have given the right answer. Excellent. So 39% of people have given the right answer. The organism can be motile. Did you forget it people? H antigen, O antigen, K antigen. They all are belonging to which group of organisms I told you? Which group of organisms I told you? Come on, let's see. No Shubham Mishra, it is not B. Achilles Shandil, it is C. But please go to menti.com. If you want to get into the quiz contest and see whether you can come on top, please go to the website mentioned at the top of the screen. It is menti.com and inside the menti.com there is a small space where you can type in 31397999 and you will be able to enter into the quiz. Okay, excellent. Uh, yes, very good. But you are all in, incomplete. Aitya Babu, Mayamai, Karthik, Akhilesh, uh, yes, uh, Akhilesh and Akshini Vasni, you are incomplete. Finish the answer. Jocelyn Benita is correct. Jeffen is correct. Preetika, look at the answer once again. H antigen, O antigen and K antigens belong to not just gram-negative bacilli, they belong to gram-negative enteric bacilli. Only if they are enteric bacilli, you will be able to call them as this H, O and K. If the organism is gram-positive, it does not belong to it. If the organism is non-enteric, we don't usually use the word. So H antigen, O antigen, K antigen come towards gram-negative enteric bacilli. If I say gram-negative enteric bacilli, then automatically option A is wrong because option A is gram-positive bacillus. Now look at option B. The organism can bind strongly to the host surface. What is the function of a flagella? What is the function of a flagella? What is the function of a flagella? Is it motility or adherence? Is it motility or adherence? Motility. So option C is right and option B is wrong. Presence of H antigen means presence of flagella. Flagella can help the organism move. It is not primarily indicated for the binding of the organism to the host surface. And presence of H antigen does not specifically tell you about the multi-drug resistant resistance. Okay, let's look at the leaderboard at the end of this question. This is the leaderboard.
कृपा इज ऑन टॉप राबिया शामिनी आरती मैजिकल रैनो अक्षय निवासनी ऑप्टिमस्ट प्राइम ओके आरती शामिनी ड्रैगनाइट अक्षय निवासनी राबिया श्रुति कृपा रे मैजिकल रैनो ऑप्टिमस्ट प्राइम यू आर ऑन द टॉप एरिया राइट नाउ लेट्स गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन फोर ऑफ एट कम ऑन पीपल यू कैन डू इट आंसर फास्ट टू गेट मोर पॉइंट पेपरोग्लाइक आर प्रेजेंट इन विच ऑर्गेनिजम गिवेन बिलो Peptidoglycans are present in what? Is it present in Klebsiella, Escherichia, Streptococcus, Cryptococcus, or B, comma C, comma D, or A, comma B, comma C? Those people who are answering very fast, take your time, think before you answer. Klebsiella, Escherichia, Streptococcus, Cryptococcus, B, comma C, comma D, A, comma B, comma C. Which one? Okay, we have three more seconds. Let's see how many of you fell for this question. See, sometimes we rush into giving an answer. Excellent, excellent. There is a 39% people are giving the right answer. That's a wonderful guess. Remember, peptidoglycans are present in gram-positive or gram-negative organisms. People, you tell me this answer first. Are they present in gram-positive or gram-negative organism? Peptidoglycan mesh work are present in gram positive or gram negative. Which organisms? Subiksha, Aditya, and Shamini, think again. Sahi, Savikumar, think again. I have told you in the previous class, I showed you the picture. Naseeb Singh, think about it. Mayamai, think about it. I have told you this in the previous class. In a gram positive organism, the outermost layer is a very thick peptidoglycan layer followed by a normal cell membrane. In a gram negative organism, you have a medium sized outer membrane, then you have a very thin layer of peptidoglycan cell wall, and then you have an inner membrane. So, the membrane in a gram negative organism is split into outer and inner, while the cell wall is sandwiched between the outer and inner. The cell wall is present, it is present between the outer layer and the inner layer. So, remember, the cell wall may be very thin in case of gram negative, but it is definitely present in gram negative also. So the answer is both. Here, Klebsiella and Escherichia, both of them are gram negative. Streptococcus is gram positive. And in these three organisms, you will be able to get the peptidoglycan layer. So when I choose B, C and D, I'm automatically giving up on A. Because A is also having peptidoglycan, then option E will not be the right answer. I go for option F. Why? Because cryptococcus is a fungus. Cryptococcal fungal wall is made up of chitin and glucan. I repeat, cryptococcus is made up of chitin and glucan. Cryptococcus is made up of chitin and glucan, while peptidoglycan is a component of bacterial cell wall. And bacterial cell walls are present in most of the almost all the gram-positive bacteria and almost most of the gram-negative bacteria, except in case of mycoplasma. So A, B, and C are the right answers. Let's see who is on the top of the leaderboard. Okay, Aarti, Ray, SK, SP, Optimus Prime, Shamini, Magical Rhino, Nit, Shivani, Shruti are on top. Let's go for the next question. Question 5 of 8. Answer fast to get more points. A patient had burning maturation erythritis was the diagnosis. Which of the following would be the primary virulence factor? Is it colonizing factor? Is it invasion? Is it endotoxin? Is it exotoxin? Is it pilus? Which one? This is the clinical application of what I taught you in the previous class. Direct application. Come on, we have 24 more seconds. For those people who have joined just now, please go to menti.com and use the code 3139799. You will be able to enter into the quiz and answer the questions. Excellent. So most of you have given the right answer. Tell me, those people who chose A, 
why did you choose a what is the importance of colonizing factory you think now look at it the patient had burning micturition and there is urethritis burning micturition means what when the patient tries to urinate it feels like a burning sensation and that indicates there is urethritis urethritis is the diagnosis burning micturition is a symptom or the sign it means the patient may have uti urethritis it means which system of your body is under attack when i say urethritis or uti which system of your body is under attack Yes, urogenital tract called as UGT or genitourinary tract called as GUT. I repeat, when there is urethritis or UTI, urinary tract infection, you are focusing on the genitourinary tract or urogenital tract. In this condition, I have told you in the previous class, adhesion is a blanket terminology for any structure that helps the organism to adhere to the surface. If I use the word fimbriae, it most commonly speaks about a gram-positive organism. When I say it is spilus, it speaks generally about a gram-negative organism except in case of Staphylococcus aureus where it is helpful for conjugation. And if it is colonizing factor antigen, that is also in gram-negative organism. But the difference in pilus and colonizing factor antigen is pilus is generally meant to bind to the uroepithelial cells while colonizing factor antigen is meant to bind to the gastrointestinal epithelial cells. So now this is the clinical understanding. When a patient, when a case history tells you that the organism is exhibiting pilus as the primary virulence factor, you will understand the infection belongs to urogenital tract. If they say colonizing factor antigen is a virulence factor, then as a physician or a clinician, you will be able to understand that the GIT is under attack. Or in the reverse process also, if somebody says the patient is having urethritis, you will know the most important virulence factor is pilus. Why it is the primary virulence factor? Imagine if this is the urethra. Urethral mucosa is very slippery and on top of it, you will be having the urine flowing along the urethra. When a bacteria like Neisseria gonococcus wants to bind to the urethra, the flushing effect of urine will push the organism out. No matter how toxic the organism is, no matter how invasive the organism is, no matter how dangerous the organism is, the organism's sole purpose of attacking a human being is a failure. Why? Because the organism went inside, it was flushed away by the turatra. But if you have a P1 pilus, pilus that can bind to the urethral cells, then the organism can stabilize itself, it can stay inside the GUT for a longer amount of time, it can start showing its infections. So without this particular virulence factor, the bacteria will not be able to cause any disease in the urogenital tract. That is why the primary virulence factor is pilus. I am not saying it is a dangerous virulence factor. See, the same patient is having E. coli based urethritis. If the E. coli is causing urethritis, then death is not because of urethritis, death can be because of sepsis. And for sepsis to happen, endotoxin, exotoxin may be needed. If the organism has become septic, that is it is entering into the circulation, the entry of the organism into circulation has been brought out by the invasion. So remember, invasion, endotoxin, exotoxin, all are different level of virulence factors, secondary, tertiary and fertility factors. But primary level virulence factor is pilus because without which the organism will not be able to cause death. Did you all understand? Yes, okay, let's look at the leaderboard now. So again, the leaderboard is shifting. So it's a very close call. 4680 and 3795, only a 600 point difference. SP is on top, Optimus Prime, SK, Magical Rhino, Shruti, Justin Benita, Kaulini, Shanmita, Aarti, Adi. So let's go for question number 6 of 8. Answer fast to get more points. The functional unit of bacteria that helps in oxidative phosphorylation or respiration is lysosomes, ribosomes, mitochondria, mesosomes. Which one? Oxidative phosphorylation or aerobic respiration in a bacteria. What is your answer?
Yes, three more seconds. Let's see how many I can get them right. Okay, so still there are some people who are choosing option B as ribosomes. I'm glad none of you chose lysosomes. Lysosomes function is not oxidative phosphorylation or respiration. Lysosomes function is destruction. Demonization or denaturation of a protein that goes inside. Any kind of structure that is bacteria inclusive thrown into the lysosome, it can be demolished. Ribosomes is the only kind of organelle present in a bacteria and it's important for protein synthesis. And remember, mitochondria is a site for oxidative phosphorylation in eukaryotes, not in case of prokaryotes. I just now told you in the previous class, that is 20 minutes back, bacteria are prokaryotes, they don't carry mitochondria. Instead, their membranes will involute in such a way or invaginate in such a way, they can accommodate electron transport chain. So that can be called as mesosomes. Can anybody tell me what is a mesosome? What is, a, what is, the, what is the meaning of the word mesosome? What is the meaning of the word mesosome? Anybody? I told you. I told you 15 minutes back. What is the meaning of the word mesosome? Excellent. Middle body. Meso means middle body is some. So it is formed only at the time being. Only a makeshift arrangement because there is absence of mitochondria. Whenever there is ATP requirement, glycolysis definitely produces ATP. But if you want more amount of energy in the form of aerobic respiration, electron transport chain will happen when there is an involution and all the electron transport chain cytochromes will be going in the order on invagination. So after electron transport chain is open or the electrons have been transported across the membrane and when the protons have been transported within the membrane, you will be able to have ATP synthesis called as mesosomes. Let's see how many of you have got the right answer. Okay, all the top 10 people have got the right answer. It means none of you, the others will be able to enter into the top 10. Yes, SP, Optimus Prime, SK, Magical Rhino, Shruti, Jaslin Benita, Kaulini, Kripa, Sarvajit and Kirtika. Let's go for the next question right away. Very good, uh, Janita, Aditya Babu, Mayamai, Harini, Kirtana and Prem Prasad. Question 7 of 8. Answer fast to get more points. Which of the following is a capsulated bacteria or an organism? Histoplasma capsulatum, Cryptococcus, Ascaris lumbricoides, Rickettsia rickettsii. Which of the following is a capsulated organism? Yes, we have one more second remaining. Excellent. The right answer is Cryptococcus. See, for those people who did not know what to choose at all, do not worry. Ascaris lumbricoides is a helminth. It doesn't have a capsule. It has a membrane sheath. It doesn't have cell membrane, etc. It's a multicellular organism. Ascaris lumbricoides is a metazoan organism, multicellular. It can be seen with naked eyes at some point of time. Ascaris lumbricoides is not a bacteria. Capsules are generally found in bacteria and one of the fungi called as Cryptococcus. Remember, those people who fell for the trick called as Histoplasma capsulatum, remember, Histoplasma capsulatum is a misnomer. It's a wrong naming. It does not have a capsule. Instead, it has a slimy mold layer. I repeat, Histoplasma capsulatum has a slimy mold layer, not a full capsule. Can you please tell me what is the difference between a slimy mold layer and a capsule? Anybody? What is the difference between a slimy mold layer and what is the difference between slimy mold layer and cryptococcus? Yes. So, excellent Harani, complete and incomplete. The slimy mold layer is incomplete while the capsule is a complete organ, complete structure. Cryptococcus has a capsule, not a slimy mold layer. Histoplasma capsulatum has a slimy layer, not a capsule. And Rickettsia rickettsii is a bacteria which is not capsulated, a gram-negative atypical bacteria which is not capsulated. Very good, Dr. Pratik. It is tough. Very good. Now, let's look at the leaderboard at the end of the seventh question. 
So again, all the top 10 people are given the right answer. It means nobody from outside can enter inside. SP is on top, Optimus Prime second, SK third, Jocelyn fourth, Sruti fifth, Kaulini sixth, Kirtika seventh, Kripa eighth, Rabia ninth, Nari tenth. Very well played. Now, yes, let's go for the last question of the day. We'll see who can end at the top 10 position. There's a very good chance you can come into the top 10. Come on, people. Answer fast to get more points. A bacteria is gram stained. At the end of the decolorization step, what will be the color of the surface of the gram negative organism? Is it blue? Is it yellow? Is it red? Is it maroon? Is it colorless? What is the color at the end of the decolorization step in gram negative organism? Blossom pink is not in the options, but yes, I understand the logic. So the answer is colorless. Please remember. Now the question is very intellectually challenging. A bacteria is gram stained. At the end of decolorization step, the decolorization is a success or a failure. But if I say it is a gram negative organism, decolorization was successful. If it's a gram positive organism, the decolorization was a failure. What is the meaning of gram positive? They are alcohol fast organisms or alcohol resistant organisms. So when I throw 95% alcohol on gram positive organisms, they can resist, they are not destroyed, the color is not lost. So if it's a gram positive organism, the primary color called as blue will be retained. So in gram positive only, at the end of decolorization also, you will have blue. In the last step of adding also, it will be blue. Why? If the decolorization is done, the blue is not lost. So when I throw the next color called as red, red will not be able to enter inside, it remains blue. So in case of a gram positive organism, blue color is the norm. But in case of a gram negative organism, the first day is blue. Attempt for decoloration is successful. It means the blue is lost. When the blue is lost, there is no color right now. So at the end of decoloration step means, it is the step before addition of the red color called as counter stain. The right answer is colorless. Did you all understand this, all of you? Very good, Dr. Prati Kumbarkar and Blossom. Excellent. So let's look at the leaderboard at the end of this particular session. Okay, Salman Bhatki, we'll be doing it in the month of April. Don't worry. In the month of April, I'll do two sessions. SK is on top, Shruti second, Kaulni third, Kripa fourth, Adi fifth, SP sixth, Optimus Prime seventh, Suga eighth, Shivani ninth, and Magical Rhino tenth. Excellent playing, all of you. Thank you very much. I hope this session was useful for you. I think this will be the last free session for this month. So in the month of April, I'll be seeing you as second year students. And I believe you all will be happy in your second year. And when you enter into second year, whenever you have difficulties, you can let me know. We can conduct some special classes for you, which can help you cope up with what you're learning parallelly in your college. And for those people who are going for the NEET PG exams, let me tell you, I'll be coming up with a lengthy classes, marathon classes for MCQs in case of microbiology and also in case of biochemistry. So thank you very much for staying with me. I have a small request. Yes, I have a small request. Please uh, put a thumbs up when you are uh, exiting this particular class. The more thumbs ups can help more students view the class. It will be online for a long time. So good karma can flow. Thank you very much. Yes. Genetics chapter. Yes, I'll do a particular session in genetics itself. Just give me two weeks time. In two weeks time, we'll do a MCQ session in genetics, which is transcription, translation and uh, replication. The most important tip is please read properly the post transcription modification and post translation modification and also read about the genetic techniques PCR, RFLP, VNT, VTN, all these kinds of uh, techniques you read, you'll definitely be able, be able to get a good rank. Okay, thank you very much, all of you. Good night. Thanks, all of you. Good night.